الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احب ان نفلا كنتينيو اون ان اور ستدي اوف هاف ميرسي ابون سلفيه we reach the part where the Sheikh said, have mercy upon Salafia, our Salaf, even though they spoke about the people of innovation and be boycotted them. However, they were the Imams of Fiqh, Imams of Sunnah, Imams of Zuhd, uh, asceticism, Imams of piety, Imams in good manners, Imams in calling to goodness and forbidding evil, Imams in jihad in the way of Allah, Imams in every good characteristic. So be true Salafis like them. Do not restrict Salafia to one area and not to the other. Do not sway to one side and disregard the other. This is very important that we have to have this understanding of what Salafia is. And this is the problem. Many of us don't really know what Salafia is. We think that it's only criticizing individuals, <laughs> but it's, it's the whole religion of Islam. Read the biographies of the Imam of Jarwa Ta'dil like Shu'bah, Sufyan, Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi, Yahya ibn Sa'id, Yahya ibn Mu'in, uh, uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, uh, Ishaq, uh, Rahwaya, and others. Consider their honor and glory. Think about their knowledge and righteous actions. Stop at the limits of fiqh and wisdom and fill yourselves with zuhud and piety. This is how you will be real and true Salafis. So if you want to get your Salafiyya uh, in order, you want to be Salafi, then you have to take all of Islam. That means the piety, that means avoiding the sins, that means every aspect of the religion, because as Imam Barbahari mentioned, he said, Islam huwa sunnah, wa sunnah to heal Islam. That Islam is a sunnah and the sunnah is Islam. So that's why, that's how the Imams of the Salaf, they saw Islam, uh, or Sunnah, the term Sunnah referred, they used to write, you'll find a lot of the books of Aqidah, and really all the branches of the religion were included in Sunnah, but especially Aqidah. Because, and now we, we say Sunnah, and this time we refer to it as generally uh, issues of fiqh, oh that's Sunnah, that's Mustahab, you know, it's, it's recommended or something like that. Oh, pray your sunnah prayers. That's how we use it now, but the Salaf didn't use it like that. So it's very important to understand that the sunnah is all of Islam. And that means including aqidah and minhaj, and it means including manners and adab and how you deal with people. Then the Shaykh said, have mercy upon Salafiyya. <clears throat> You should know the different rulings according to a time and a place, what is spoken about and what should not be spoken about, which issues are began and with which issues are not. These delicate matters you will not be able to know and differentiate between them without the authority of knowledge, the intelligence of a mind. Thereafter, defend Islam and the Sunnah in its entirety. Do not speak about an evil which is hidden and yet you disregard, or a greater, more apparent evil. Do not speak about a minor bidah yet you disregard a bid'ah which is overwhelming. Do not speak about a person who is unknown, yet you disregard a person whose danger is much greater. So this is very important as it shows that we have to look into the priorities. And this comes with ilm and, and, and a person of intellect, intellectual capacity, hikmah, that they have wisdom and they have an aql, they have an intellect. Because some people, they have some knowledge of the deen, but they don't have any wisdom. They don't have any hikmah. And they don't have any fiqh. They don't understand. Some people are very good at memorizing. They've memorized whole books. Bulugh al-Maram, Riyadh al this and this and this and this. But they have very little fiqh for deen. But you want to be balanced in that you have, you've memorized and you have, uh, 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 and you have fiqh, understanding of what you memorized. And you can, you have wisdom that you can put things in its appropriate place. And subhanAllah, how many people you would be surprised if we really analyze what some of the people that are out there giving da'wah that they lack, maybe they lack wisdom or maybe their desires, maybe some bid'ah and some hizbiyah has crept into them. Even though they studied in kuliyah to such and such, even though they graduated from jamia at university such and such, even though they got a master's degree in such and such. But subhanAllah, where's their fiqh? Where's their wisdom? Where's all that ilm that they benefit? SubhanAllah, Wallah, Mr. 
have mercy upon Salafi, Allah the Most High said, O oh, you who believe, enter in Islam completely and perfectly. So take the religion from all its angles and remain vigilant in all situations. We want a Salafi who is a fiqih, a person who can explain to the people the rulings of the religion upon knowledge, sunnah, and Salafiyah. We want a Salafi who is a wa'id, uh, meaning someone who admonishes good in preaching, who fills the heart of the people with the fear of Allah and the yearning of Jannah upon knowledge and sunnah. We want a, a Salafi who is uh, muhtasib, a person who is responsible, who defends the religion and negates the arrogance of the falsifiers, the interpretation of the ignorance and altering of the extremists upon knowledge and sunnah. So that, you know, we Salafi is complete. And this is what we need as far as our du'a. We need people with knowledge. So having mercy upon Salafi, we need people that are knowledgeable with fiqh, fiddin, that understand and practice the various branches of the deen and can articulate that and with ilm wa fiqh and, and wisdom and intellect and know how to put everything in its proper place. That's from hikmah. <clears throat> we want a Salafi who is tarbawi. This is very important too. A cultivator who attaches importance to family members, women and youth. He directs them with good sound advice upon knowledge and sunnah. This is a Salafi we want. So it's very important that uh, someone uh, a dai, especially one who's a caller, to Islam, that they encompass these traits, <clears throat> that they are uh, good at educating the people and raising up the people, giving the people what they need, not tearing them down and distorting the principles of the deen. Wallahu mustaan. Then the Sheikh says, have mercy upon Salafia. We've had enough of divisions and discord, boycotting and cutting off. Allah has made you worshippers of Allah. Brothers, be avenues of mercy towards each other. Give glad tidings and do not cause people to flee away. Make things easy and not difficult. Work with each other and do not differ. This is the advice and counsel of the Prophet wasallam to every truthful Salafi. In closing, it does not matter to me if a lurking, deviant, deviated Ikhwani, an arrogant Sururi, a rebellious Khadiji, an ignorant Tabliki, or even a misguided Ashadi, a hating Rafadi, or a cursed liberal rejoices due to my speech. We are not a Hizb that we have to exchange advice and principles beneath the table or secretly write them on notice boards in lonely corridors. That's very important. That Dawah Ta'ala Sun is open for everyone. And this is why you see, and I don't have much to offer you, but I just try to offer the little that, I, that I, I've learned. I don't care who benefits from it. If a tabliki, I have people who listen to me who are influenced by obviously Dio Bundy's and, 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 and you know, those Sufi groups uh, like Jamaat Tablik that have in their soul, some that may have some Ashadi influence and other various uh, groups and sects. I don't care if they benefit, because if you're giving them the pure Islam, the pure Salafiyah, then, they're then what they're benefiting from you is the good. And perhaps they'll be inclined to take more in the minhaj. Our Dao is for everyone. That is one thing we have been missing over the years, especially amongst Du'at in the West. And, and in fact, I would just say around the world, because in my experiences, I found that the same fitna was in Indonesia. The same fitna is in, in Ethiopia. The same fitna is amongst the Somalis. The same fitna, it doesn't matter. So there's something that's been going on for years, especially with the death, after the death of many of those great Imams like Ben, ben, uh, ben Baz Ben Uthaymin and Imam Muqbil and others, where the people uh, split and divided and came up with new principles and new priorities as far as the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah and, and Dawah to Salafiyah. And so it's very important, you know, those Imams that even Hizbis and others benefit. I don't care who benefits. This is going to help my record if someone benefits from what I'm saying. If an extreme Sufi benefits from a word that I said, hamd, maybe that'll be a source of guidance for them. And I remember asking several Mashaykh, uh, my last one of my last years in Medina before I when I the last time I went to Yemen and I asked uh, Sheikh Suleiman Rahili, I asked Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, I asked Sheikh uh, Abdullah Obeylan, my Sheikh Sheikh Saeed, 
Ben Halal. I asked uh, many various different Mashaikh and Sheikh Salih Sahemi. And probably the most simplest of advice, and, they, and, and Sheikh Muhammad ibn of the Wahhab al Aqil, and they all basically said more or less the same thing about certain things about giving da'wah to Ahl Bid'ah. And that the, the Shahid, the main point is, is that it depends on the benefits and the harms. And Sheikh Ibrahim put it in the best perspective because he, he gave me the lead. He just, he, he didn't go into, you know, Sheikh Suleiman Rahili gave some nice kawaid and he's getting, you know, and he said, you know, make sure your Salafi brothers, they're aware that you're going to this masjid of Ahl Bid'ah and so you don't have beef with them and this and, you know, he gave some nice principles and some nice uh, uh, things to be concerned with. And those other uh, great mashayikh. But Sheikh Ibrahim, he just said something very simple to me. He said, he said, it doesn't matter, because I said, Sheikh, you know, our Mashaikh differ, because some of our Mashaikh, like Sheikh Abed, Sheikh Rabi, and definitely Sheikh Mohammed Mahadi and Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari, they take a very hard, harsher position, a very stern position about giving uh, Dawah to Ahl uh, Bid'ah, okay? And I think the most correct is that it's not a black and white issue, it's what those other Mashaikh said, and great imams before them said and did is that it, it depends on the harms and the benefits that you have to weigh the harms and the benefits and what Sheikh uh, Ibrahim said that was very nice because it was just plain and simple evidence from the uh, Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah he said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and this is what he said to me he said it doesn't matter what the people are saying the differences between the Mashaikh on this he said the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said لِيَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجِلٍ وَاحِدٍ خَيْرًا لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرٍ نَعْمٍ he said, if Allah guides one person from uh, uh, If one man, one person is guided from what you say, it's better for you than the red camels. Okay, For us today, we don't see any relevance to the red camels. If you go to where I live in Saudi Arabia, you'll see the because I live, you know, a lot of Bedouins. My students, they're Bedouins. And they love camels. They make videos and they show you that's all they do with their is their whatever chance you call that that they they do and they'll show you those guys they love they will fight you about a camel if you speak ill about a camel or especially their particular camel those camels are like their family and I'm not even joking and so for the Arabs in the past especially the red camel and I think now it might be a different colored camel it might be a black camel I don't know has great uh, had great value it was one of the the the, the biggest most important, um, uh, greatest forms of wealth for them, the red camel. So it had immense value. And so the Prophet Sallallahu made that example because that was the people that he was addressing. They could understand that, that example, that similitude, if you will. He said, If one man is guided through your hand to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, it's better for you than the red camels. So that shows that's better than all the wealth of the dunya. It's very important. Dawah is so important. That's why we try to keep doing so we leave, leave something for our souls. We hope that people benefit because this can be something on our, our scale of good deeds with all the evil and wickedness that a lot of us fall into. And I'm speaking about myself first and foremost. Wallah, and may Allah guide us and guide you. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And forgive us and forgive you. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. That... We want to leave something good behind. So even if someone from Ahl Bid'ah benefits from that, even if they try to distort it to uh, to support their cause, because this is one of the biggest hujjahs or, or evidence that people say, don't give Bid'ah, don't give it to Ahl Bid'ah. Look at Sheikh Abdul Masin's book, uh, the Hizbis benefit from this. This is what Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi said about his book, Riftan, and, and Sheikh Rabi, and, and, and Fale al Harbi, and, and Sheikh Rabi, and others. They criticize his book for this. One of the reasons. Because they said, Ahl Bid'ah, it's uh, Ahl Bid'ah has been, the Sheikh clearly wrote in the book that this is for between Salafis, it's between Ahl Sunnah when they have disputes. So what if the Hizbis benefit from it? Because the bottom line is, is it haq or is it batal? So if if someone is getting, if I, if I give the truth to a Christian, am I supporting Christianity? No. If I give the truth to the Yahud, to a Jew, it, am I supporting Judaism? Now, if I teach something about Islam to a Buddhist, am I supporting Buddhism? No. 
that's not a, a very strong argument for someone to use that as a evidence. So it's very important that whoever benefits, and if it brings them closer to Allah, then it's better for you than the, the wealth that you can attain in this dunya. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.